he actually will mess around with. We're rolling cameras. Uh, speed. Speed. Camera. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Ah, football player on ESPN. Never mind. That's <laughs> what football players do. So you're just going to stare at the camera for a while? Okay. Is she drinking now? Am I drinking? Well. Choked Cut. up on the camera. Yeah. Sure. We're, still, we're still rolling. Speed. And camera. People think this comes from a faucet. We do that again? So yeah, I messed up. People think this comes from the faucet. It comes from a protected watershed. The forest filters my water, and I protect the forest. In our entire country, there are only six major metropolitan areas like this. Boston, New York, San Francisco, Portland, Tacoma, and us. To maintain the watershed and a pipe clean water to every house, every business, and every school, it costs about half a penny per gallon. This costs $1.40 for 16 ounces. There are 128 ounces in a gallon. This costs half a penny per gallon. This costs $11.20 per gallon. Do the math. I'm just trying to think like a watershed. Here's the map. Chester Morse Reservoir fills up. Walsh Creek. Rock Creek. Taylor Creek. Peterson Creek. Madsen Creek. The Cedar River fills up half of Lake Washington. May Creek. Cole Creek. Kelsey Creek. Forbes Creek. Juanita Creek. Denny Creek. The Issaquah Creek Basin. Tibbetts Creek. Lake Sammamish. Sammamish River. Evans Creek, Cottage Creek, Bear Creek, Little Bear Creek, North Creek, Swamp Creek. The other half of Lake Washington fills up. Lion Creek, McAleer Creek, Thornton Creek, Green Lake. All that water squeezes through the Mont Lake Cut, circles Lake Union, flushes the Ballard Locks, hits salt water, feeds the nearshore habitat, and finally fills up Puget Sound. We have sister watersheds to the south and brother watersheds to the north. Water flows downhill from the contours of the landscape. The shape of the land is the same as the flow of the water. Puget Sound gets it all, and salmon swim up it. I live on Kelsey Creek. I go to school here. We play against these schools. I get gas here. My girlfriend's house, my buddies live here. I get my water from here, and when I flush my toilet, it goes over there. The shoes I'm wearing were manufactured in China. I get my food from the grocery store, which gets my food from somebody else's watershed. Sometimes I go to the farmer's market, and that food comes from here. Then in a hurry, I get fast food from here, 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 and here. And my garbage goes there. My recycling goes this way, compost that way. And the air I breathe comes in from here. Rain falls pretty much everywhere. And stormwater pollution runs off all the rooftops and the lawns and the driveways and the streets. And it all goes in there. King County, Snohomish County. City boundaries cut right through streams. School district boundaries divide up the watershed like this. Imagine what it would look like if city boundaries and school district boundaries had the same ecological logic as the watershed. This would be my city, the city of the Kelsey Creek Basin. And I would go to the Kelsey Creek School District. I would live in the city of Thornton Creek and go to the Thornton Creek School District. I would live in the city of the Cedar River Basin. My school district would have the same name. That is what the first people knew. They knew their water should address stream by stream. They built their settlements based on the confluence of rivers, floodplain, and estuary. That's where the food was. The streams divided the landscape and the seasons provided sustenance because salmon swam through this whole story and it was probably going on for at least 5,000 years. 40 to 50,000 people distributed in something like 260 longhouse villages. The next people that came along, they built their cities based on the grid system, a new kind of logic for dividing up the landscape. Seattle, 1856. A guy sketched it from a sailing ship anchored in Elliott Bay. He is looking at Safeco Field and the ferry boat docks, only he doesn't know it. What he sees is a massive blanket of continuous old growth forest. Trees a thousand years old, right up to the Elliott Bay shoreline. In the center of town, he sketches Yesler's sawmill, busy shipping timber to San Francisco for the gold mines and the new railroads. North of town, the Methodist Church. 
South of town, Madame Damnable's establishment, a brothel. Seattle, 22 years later. We got ourselves a respectable little town. 41 years later, a small city. 53 years later, 80,000 people. In the space of only 100 years, we've built a lot of roads. We've built up a vast network of water supply pipes to bring clean water to every sink, shower, tub, and toilet. We've built sewage pipes to take away our waste, and we've built state-of-the-art wastewater treatment centers. Within 12 hours after I flush, that water gets treated and is right back in the Puget Sound. Here's the situation. I drink in the whole system. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 22% permanent cap on annual water withdrawal for all human use from the Cedar River. One million people a day depend on it, but it's capped at 22%. If I gave you 100 pennies, you could only use 22 of them. If I bought you a whole pizza, you could only eat two slices. That's because we need 78% in the river so that salmon have enough water to swim upstream to their spawning grounds, and so that they won't get stuck in dry gravel beds. We need 78% in the river so that the ballard logs can get boats up and down from sea level to lake level. We need 78% in the river so that the floating bridges can float. Because if the water level in the lake changes more than a foot or two, the bridges will snap. We have to manage the watershed very, very carefully. And right now, we are using between 18 and 20% depending on the season. That's our current consumption. That's just 4% below our annual limit but really close to the permanent cap of 22%. And then it gets even more complicated because the human population in our region is growing by about 18,000 people every year. That's 50 people a day, or two people every hour. It's not going to work. It's not gonna work. It's not going to work. But of course it's gonna work. I live here. That's the whole point of going to school, to figure out how to solve problems like this. I want to know my watershed address. <laughs> 